Thank you all for being here again, again, Attorney Wanda Lynn Gavan. We were consulted yesterday. Uh, we received phone calls from the parents who have just introduced themselves regarding a matter that had occurred at uh, Hoover High School. We are here as legal counsel for a family whose 17 year old child has been subjected to an experience no child should ever go through, regardless of his on the field of play. As you know, a video has gone viral depicting acts by the Hoover High School head coach, football coach, Drew Gilmer. The acts committed by Gilmer are pervasive, perverted, abusive, extreme, outrageous, and beyond all possible bounds of human decency from someone who is deemed or defined as an educator in the public school system in the state of Alabama. It is our belief, based on information received so far, that this then 16-year-old, because his birthday is actually today and he is turned 17, was subjected to physical abuse, extreme humiliation, since this has gone viral nationally, and emotional distress, distress due to no fault of his own by a full-grown man entrusted with the safety and well-being of students. Again, we're not here to question if this coach is a good field of play coach. We're here questioning whether the actions that were depicted in the video were, some, were those that deserved review as well as legal recourse. As you can imagine, the mother and family are devastated to the degree of shock and disbelief that this young student is forever harmed and will be adversely impacted for the rest of his life. In the, in the coming days, as legal counsel, we will explore all potential claims, both state and federal, against the Hoover school system and Coach Gilmer. To place him on administrative leave is not enough. Coach Gilmer committed acts that justifiably or that justify termination and being enjoined from ever coaching on any level going forward. In closing, the family is asking for privacy because we are dealing with a minor child as they deal with a very sensitive matter and make decisions regarding their young child's life and education, in particular future education in the Hoover School System. We'll entertain a few questions but a full statement will be released on behalf of the family in the coming days. We were able to see just a small portion of the clip. Mm -hmm. Could you, were you able to see the clip in its entirety as far as his interaction with the, the student with the hip thrusting gest gesture? Yes, I have reviewed it. Again, everything is of course left to a matter of interpretation, so much so that we were disturbed and as counsel stated, we are here for the purpose of trying to A, notify the public that we are representing the, the family. We're going to pursue every legal avenue. Uh, again, we're not here to debate whether this coach is a good coach. This has nothing to do with him being a good coach on the field of play. It has everything to do with what was depicted on the video in an instance that left pause and concern again throughout not just Alabama but throughout the sports industry as a whole. Was it the same student in the second clip or not? Where the, um, where it's the two, we're dealing with two different students. Okay. These parents are the parents of the student in the first clip. He, they are the parents and that's a great question. They are the parents of the young man in which once the helmet comes off, the coach appears to, I, I'm assuming you're hunching, but the, to do the hunching or placing of his face near his private area. 
from a legality standpoint, I understand y'all wanted a review uh, from the, in the legal field. Will y'all be suing the coach? And if so, uh, for, under what grounds were y'all going after? Well, as you can imagine, this is a very, very volatile situation. Um, there have been things done by the Hoover School Board so far. Like they removed the video from Huddle. As legal counsel, it's our responsibility to look at every potential legal avenue that we can pursue. And we are looking at claims on the state level, and we're looking at claims on the federal level. Um, this child didn't deserve what happened to him. So whatever we need to do, litigation-wise, we are looking at that heavily and hope to have something accomplished in the very near future. Is there any indication that this happened more than once to this particular child, whether it be this type of action or another action? As Attorney Bay Daniel said, we are investigating. We do have some things that have come to us. You, you can all imagine, once the story broke last night, uh, we literally were in the communication about something else, and our phones literally lit up uh, as I think her, her mother had reached out, and he didn't even know really what was going on, and then he just started getting a barrage from all over, people from over the state of Alabama. Um, and so at that point, we took a closer look because we certainly would not come here if we had not given Paul been given pause to do so. So for us, we started there. We met with the family uh, this morning. Certain uh, details have come uh, to our attention that we will certainly address as we move about uh, that process. Uh, because many of you uh, in here are now aware, I will just only address this. Uh, she, of course, did, um, and because I want to be clear on it, she, as a parent, was so bothered yesterday after taking her child for uh, medical attention review. Uh, she, of course, reached out and went to the Hoover Police Department to begin pursuing official criminal charges against the coaching push. Um, they are investigating it. Uh, it is our understanding that it's been moved to the uh, sexual, uh, the SUV division, and those uh, detectives for that division are now investigating. When did that incident that was captured on video take place? It took place actually Friday of last week and it was leaked on yesterday. She, the mother received a call that there was a situation that had occurred that has gone viral. She's in a panic situation. She's, you know, going about her day. She's, what's going on? Ma'am, we have a situation. We really need to speak with you. So at that point, she's in a panic because she doesn't know what's going on with her child. So she learned from someone else. It wasn't the student. She learned from the administrator. And, and so, the only reason I believe she learned about it because it had been leaked in the manner that it was leaked. So they were trying to get ahead of the situation. And so at that point, everything just went viral. Do we know which coach it was that did the thrusting or, or humping motion? Allegedly, it is the head coach, and that is Coach Gilmer, uh, based upon what the athletic director shared with the mother on yesterday when they met. And so knowing that the uh, player involved uh, has a birthday today, can you give us an update on how he's doing and navigating the situation over the past few days? Mr. Mac, Attorney McDaniel said to you, we've been partners, we've been friends, partners, uh, and in association as counsel for almost, uh, well, I've been practicing 20 years now, a little bit over, but we knew each other before then. So we've been friends a long time. And we've handled murder cases. Many of you know that we've stepped in on different types of cases. Uh, but Mr. McDaniels, was, Attorney McDaniels was very alarmed because what he saw as a black man, the young man should be coming in his office to look at him because of his accomplishments and not be sitting there because his heart has been ripped out by students who have teased him to say, based upon their review, it looks like 
the coach was trying to F you, but they actually said the F word. So imagine what a, a young man feels like with that. So he's very emotional. And again, as stated, we're not sure, as in the statement, whether he will return to Hoover at this point. Um, and for me, many of you all know, Attorney Rep. Um, McDaniels and I, we represent educators. We're attorneys for the edu Alabama Education Association. But we've been given clearance to represent this case because these are not AEA uh, members. And so we're going to do so because it's just not right. And if I may add, um, meeting with the, the, the minor today for the first time, um, outstanding young man. He's clear on what he wants his future to be. Um, he is dealt with a situation that has him emotionally distraught. Um, as you can imagine, the tension this is getting has had a major impact on his emotional state and, and mind. And um, so he, he, at this point, is becoming withdrawn. Um, he's been humiliated. Like, Attorney Gabane said the players said certain things to him when this incident occurred. He wanted to, to hide it, but um, and um, because he was so embarrassed, but because the video was leaked, and now um, of course the students at the high school know who he is. Uh, we're not going to say his name. We're going to protect his privacy as much as we can. But imagine your 16-year-old kid um, being subjected to that kind of humiliation by a grown man who's supposed to be in a position of trust. So his state of mind right now is, is not well. Um, uh, and he's probably going to need counseling. Uh, he's, you know, he's looking into that. So um, we ask that the public understand what this kid is going through and, and pray for him that he'll be able to get over this. Because he did nothing to deserve what happened to him. Has he or the other student continued to practice, or have they been out of practice? We no. Will, yeah, we will actually be meeting with the other students' uh, parents this afternoon. They actually reached out a little while ago, but he has not uh, practiced at all. Again, as my attorney Matt Daniel said, he got, he's not even sure. And he's been a part of the Hoover school system all of his life. And he's also, not. Hoover is slated to start school tomorrow. Have any accommodations been made for any of these students to maybe start later or anything? That's what we talked about. That's something we're, we're, we're working on with the family, and um, that's going to be determined over the next couple of days. Um, but more than likely, he will not be in, in, in school tomorrow for sure. And the other student as well? or We don't know about the other student yet. We haven't met with the, the parents of the other okay. student. So, um, um, and just to, just to be clear, the mother pulled him off the football field after she was contacted by a member of the football program uh, at Hoover High School. Uh, and, um, you know, I don't even want to talk about her state of mind, her, what she's going through, having seen what happened to her son and having, having seen what he's going through now. But um, they are a strong family. Uh, as you can see, they got support from Pastor, other family members. Pastors here also. And, um, they're just praying that the public would understand. We know there's a lot of chatter out there in support of the football coach. Um, we understand that, but I would pose a question to those who, if you want to support him as a football coach, fine, but what about this child who was violated? Um, what's more important? We've talked about the head coach. What about the second coach involved in this? Is it believed that he's the one who took the helmet off? Well, we will address all of that this afternoon. We will connect all of the dots uh, at that time since we are now um, going to be engaging or being engaged with the other student. So therefore, again, we will have another update uh, maybe tomorrow, no later than Friday for sure. Once we connect all of those dots for clarity purpose, we were able to move forward with uh, this particular minor because of the information that was readily available. And because once she went into mom mode yesterday because of her child, we were able to gather a few more facts than not. And again, and, and, and this is at some point, and I'm hoping 
uh, that this, because I understand sports is big in Alabama. It's, it's big everywhere. So we know, and, and Hoover is big. It's, we, for years, call it Hoover University. But again, even with the start of the field of play in just a few days, again, for those parents that are out there, those other students that are out there, we understand the need and urgency and the desire of students, kids to be able to play. However, when the video rolled tape and the visual that went viral took place as a parent, his parents had to say, wait a minute. His father is here. We know how these things work. But the position for which his head was forced down was a game changer. And when you meet with the other player's family, are they interested in taking legal action? Are they interested in filing charges? Um, with that, we don't, we don't know. know yet. We have to talk to them. Yeah, we will make that determination. As far as the family filing a police report, what charges are, are is this? It, is the co head coach potentially looking at? Well, the Hoover Police Department makes that final decision. They investigate based on the information and the evidence. Uh, I'm sure they'll look at the video and whatever appropriate charges, criminal, that need to be filed, they will file. And, but we don't want to speculate. We won't let them do their job. And hopefully they will reach the right conclusion. But it's being, as he says, we don't know what the charges will be. She discussed that and the same thing was said, but the uh, supervisor that she spoke with did advise that it would go to the sexual victims unit. So a police report has been filed with SVU? Yes. Well, I'm assuming it's SVU. We don't outsource it. Okay. They determine where it goes, and they told her that's where it would be. But a police report's definitely been filed? Yes. yes. And for the sake of anonymity, do you prefer we not disclose your names in our reporting? Yes. I guess, can you lay out the next few steps? It just seems like we're at a very early point in this juncture, and I understand there's a lot of investigation that has to take place. Mm -hmm. Uh, just because we're not going to be in the trenches as y'all fight for justice, what what is the next few days and weeks look like for this? Well, as attorneys, we have to do our due diligence to investigate all the information. So there are other parties that we have to talk to. Um, there is meetings we have to have with each other and with other potential uh, associated counsel to to lay out the plan moving forward. Now, I believe that plan is going to include litigation. Uh, there is a video, thankfully, of what happened, but uh, the next few days the plan would be to review all the evidence, gather as much, much information as we can to make the best decision for this young man and his family going forward, whether it's litigation or some other remedy, but we believe that uh, what's happened is so atrocious that it deserves deserves as much attention from a legal standpoint as possible. So we will make whatever necessary, um, take whatever necessary actions we need to take. From a, legal, from a legal standpoint, is it just the coaches or could we see the Hoover School District also well, face? Well, that's, that's part of the investigation. I mean, um, was this a negligent hire? Did they really investigate Coach Gilmer's past? Um, we've heard a lot of things. We've gotten information about things that happened at the former school. So if they didn't do their due diligence, if this was a bad hire, knowing if they knew the type of action this coach has been engaged in with high school students, then they have a responsibility to remedy that. They should have not hired him in the first place if they knew of these things. If they, if they didn't know, why didn't they know? So yeah, the Hoover School Board, uh, school system, is part of the investigation that we're conducting because they, they hired this coach. So they have some responsibility as well. And would you like to take a chance or opportunity to hit out some of the comments and really what we've seen on social media are accusing uh, or saying this is common day, this is how it's been done. Would, would the family like to have any response to perhaps really give their point of view or their child's point of view on the incident? Well, this, this is not common. Anybody who says that, is trying to cover for a football coach who committed a, an atrocious act against a minor. So it's nothing normal or common about a coach thrusting his lower 
uh, private parts into a kid's face. I mean, I mean, we know football is a tough sport. Uh, all sports are tough. Tough coaches, you know, get get in players' faces and they grab them by the shoulder pads, they push them around. This goes way beyond those kind of actions, and it's shocking that the public, many of the public, uh, are looking at this with a blind eye. But this is not the common the common of the norm for football coaches. And if I just may, I promise, attorney may be you here. I just had a laughing is in the office this morning I'm dealing with the uh, loss of their close friend and brother just yesterday and I said well I'm, I'm zen but now many of you all know me listen if this was any ordinary moment in sports and we know football is a contact sport and we know there's contact between coaches let me say this, let me roll tape. ESPN would not have picked it up. MSN would not have picked it up. CNN would not have picked it up. The Associated Press would not have picked it up. The problem in this situation is, we've seen and we know the levels of contacts that coaches have. But in an instance that a coach takes a player's head, a child, grabs it and pulls it to his private area, something's wrong with that. And that goes beyond a level of just the regular whatever. That's aggression. And I'm beginning to wonder, is there something else that may need to be unmasked? Because that was an impulse that hit. And it did not only that, it was totally unnecessary. It was totally, in that instance, unnecessary. So, again, as Attorney McDaniel said, and as, as I said, we're not just looking at the field of play. And we know we're going into Labor Day, hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. We all love sports. But you ask the question, Tristan, if it were your daughter or your son, and you saw a video, not him grabbing, not him just patting, but we've seen it all our lives. He literally pulled the young man's head. Not only she's standing right here. Before she asked one question a moment ago, she was literally standing here hunching. Because that is what he did. He didn't do it up here. He didn't do it on the side. He went with this young man's head down below. He didn't just pull it. He pulled it more than once. So now, you all as the media and journalists have to decide, has he fallen below a standard? That's not for me to decide, that's for the trial fact. And when you say there are other things coming to light and questions about you know practices uh, at former schools, are you all referring to Clay Chalkville? What school are you all referring to when you say that? That's, that's right. definitely one of the schools, yes. I mean, I've seen comments People send me messages um, where this coach has even invoked violence against players, saying he would George for them. Uh, how true that is, I don't know. But if a, bunch, if a bunch of people are saying it, and these are people who supposedly um, heard or witnessed this, this type of information, there's a problem with this coach. I mean, to be tough as a coach is one thing, but to take it to a level of extreme outrageousness, indecency, and insensitivity is something that Hoover should not tolerate. And again, this coach does not belong in the field coaching, coaching kids. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I don't care how good his record is. I may say championships he's won, but I guarantee that other kids who suffer other things before his tenure at Hoover, who, um, who just suffered it in silence. So finally, He's been exposed, and whatever whatever um, ends up happening, we're going to make sure we do our best to make sure this guy doesn't coach again. And this wasn't a game. This was not a game. This was not Friday night football. This was a drill. This was a drill, not a game. Not where the game was on the line. Come on now. You're that aggressive at a drill practice? That doesn't make sense to me.
And especially if it wasn't even on the day of the big game. So again, you all will do your research and uh, once we can, all, it, all, it, it will all come together. But again, as what was stated and we, as we close, hey, it's very simple for us. It's not about the field actual on the play. It's what was captured on camera. And she, as a parent, has every right, regardless of who the school is, to voice her opinion and take action on behalf of her minor child. It's unacceptable. And if there are no further questions. Are you okay with the parents being shown on camera? I will have to let Attorney Matt Daniels, you can make that and they can make that decision. Because I'm that's up. Uh, I, I don't think Miss Lynette wants to be shown on camera. <laughs> Mr. Barnum. So, that's where we are. Again, because so much is happening, listen, we live in a mean viral time. Yeah, and, and, and just to, you know, we just got information shortly before we started that there have been threats made against the other player um, by members of the public um, who were in support of, uh, of the coach. So there is a concern for safety of, of, of this young man and the other young man as well. And, and you guys have been on social media online. You've probably seen many of the comments and things people are saying uh, as, as well. So, um, so, so in order to protect the safety of this young man, um, you know, and, and, and the parents because, you know, we live in crazy times and people do crazy things. So we can't take any anything for granted going forward, um, doing it, doing this, doing this, doing this, our legal investigation and what goes forward.